that the inf uh, Lieutenant Shane Foley, S-H-A-N-E-F-O-L-E-Y, the information I'm about to provide you is preliminary and subject to change. This, we're still early on in the investigation, and there's more information that's going to come in we, that we hope to be able to provide, actually that we will be able to provide to you uh, tomorrow. What I can tell you at this point is that earlier today, shortly before 5 p.m., IMPD East District officers located a stolen black Ford F-250 pickup truck near 19th and Campbell Avenue. Off, an IMPD officer in a fully marked vehicle attempted to stop the vehicle. The vehicle stopped and then backed up and rammed the IMPD vehicle, uh, causing airbag deployment and disabling the vehicle. That officer received minor injury, head injuries and was transported to area hospital. A short time later, officers located that stolen truck again and attempted to stop the vehicle and the vehicle refused to stop, which resulted in a vehicle pursuit. Uh, that vehicle pursuit continued until the 300 block of Poplar Road behind me, where the truck again stopped, backed up and rammed another IMPD police vehicle, resulting in airbag deployment and disabling of the vehicle. That, uh, that IMPD officer received minor leg injuries and was transported to area hospital. The truck again backed up into a third IMPD vehicle, ramming that vehicle, causing airbag deployment and disabling that vehicle. Uh, that officer was injured, received uh, injuries to his arm, which is possibly a broken arm or wrist that has not been confirmed. Uh, he was uh, also uh, taken to an area hospital for treatment. Uh, all three officers are expected to be released tonight. Uh, at some point uh, here on Poplar Road, two officers discharged their firearms, uh, resulting in the driver of the truck being struck. Officers then provided medical treatment to the, to the driver, and he was transported to area hospital in stable condition. Uh, one additional note that I want to mention about the uh, stolen vehicle, when officers ran that, that vehicle plate, they received information back from the hit that indicated a stolen firearm was also in that vehicle. Uh, again, officers provided medical treatment, and the, and the driver, the suspect, was transported to an area hospital in stable condition. Multiple body-worn cameras were um, on the officers and activated when captured uh, portions of this incident, which are being re reviewed by investigators. The Indianapolis Marion County Forensic Services Agency is on scene. They're collecting uh, forensic evidence. They're documenting and collecting that evidence, which will be used in, in the investigation. The Marion County, Marion County Prosecutor's Office was on scene and is being consulted throughout the investigation. Uh, no uninvolved citizens were injured as a result of this incident. The IMPD critical incident response team uh, is, was on scene and has been for several hours investigating the criminal component of this incident. The IMPD internal affairs unit is also on scene and they are investigating the internal uh, policies component. These are separate investigations and uh, CERT, the critical incident response team, does the criminal investigation and the internal affairs unit does the internal investigation to review for any possible policy violations. The officers involved uh, are, have been placed on administrative leave as a standard protocol during a, an officer-involved shooting. The police officer support team, or POST, is on scene and assisting with officers providing them with support, and the IMPD chaplain's office is also on scene. Anybody with information about this incident is asked to contact the IMPD uh, CERT team at 327-3475. If anybody has any video evidence of what, what took place here, we certainly want that information so that way we can uh, con conduct the investigation. Uh, we do have vo photos that we'll be able to provide to you of, of all three uh, police vehicles um, as well as the truck. And for the media that's on scene, we'll take you down to, to see that. Uh, we'll be here probably for several hours as, as evidence is collected, uh, speaking with witnesses, speaking with uh, officers who are involved. So this road will be closed for several hours as that investigation continues. We, will, we do expect to provide more information tomorrow about the status of the investigation, uh, and I think that's all. Uh, are there any questions? What can you tell us about the suspect? It's, a, it's an adult male. Uh, we expect to be able to provide uh, that individual's identity, uh, hopefully tomorrow morning. Did, did this suspect have any uh, outstanding warrants or anything like that? Uh, no. How common is it for an officer to try to initiate a traffic stop and then the vehicle in question rams uh, the officer's vehicle like that? It's certainly uncommon. Um, 
I'm not familiar with any recent that are to this extent where three police vehicles were disabled in the course of that action. Did the suspect ever point a gun at officers? That's something that will be uh, part of the investigation. So the way the investigation works is that the investigators need to speak with them, and some of that information is not going to be publicly accessible at this time, just like any other investigation. Uh, we need to ensure that we have the officers give independent statements, and uh, it, the information that we're providing, some of that is based upon uh, witness testimony and body camera footage. And did you find that um, stolen firearm in the vehicle? Uh, investigators are still here, and they are going to search the vehicle. Uh, they needed to obtain a search warrant. So part of that investigation is getting the search warrant, searching the vehicle, um, uh, yeah, searching the vehicle. And through the course of that, we should be able to provide more information about whether or not any evidence was found inside. Getting back to the pursuit itself, all right, so we had, we had three vehicles that were all ran to the point they were disabled, correct? To, to clarify, one was at the initial scene. Right. Um, so I can't say that a pursuit occurred there, and then two occurred later on during the course of the pursuit, for sure. How are officers typically uh, supposed to handle a situation like that? Handle their vehicle being rammed? Yeah, or, or, or a situation like where you've got a, a pursuit going on where you've got the likelihood of, you know, the suspect vehicle ramming them. I, I guess, generally speaking, what does IMPD train its officers to do in a case like this? So, so it's a complicated question because, you know, when we go through our training, officers, we can't train to every scenario. Uh, we train for a variety of situations, but we can't train to every specific situation that officers are going to encounter. Uh, you know, during the course of, of something like this, we certainly want the officers to do what they can to be safe. We want the public to do, to do what can to be safe and to try to make a, an apprehension of, of the suspect in a way that n nobody is injured, if, that, if at all possible. Officers have to react to what's presented to them. And that's what occurred today. And uh, that's why we have investigation, an investigative process, both a criminal and internal affairs investigation process, to determine you know, were, were their actions appropriate and uh, you know, are any uh, charges appropriate for the for the suspect involved. Lieutenant Foley, you worked this side of town before when you were a patrolman. Can you speak on the good work that your officers do on this side of town and the challenges that they face? Yeah, it's, it's a busy area. Uh, I was out here, i give an example. Yesterday I was out here where officers uh, responded to an incident where a child was injured and used automated uh, license plate reader cameras or license plate readers to locate both the child and the child's father. You know, they went above and beyond what would be, what maybe someone would expect from the officers. And, and they're doing that in between taking other runs. Uh, you know, the dedication of the officers, not only in, on this district, but across the department, uh, I can't speak more, um, more highly of. How many officers total were involved in the pursuit itself? That information I don't have, uh, that will come, come out during the course of the investigation. Um, you know, we use a variety of tactics, a variety of techniques to determine how many people were involved, because uh, if we just look at the CAD, that doesn't tell us, tell us everything. We'll take one more question. How many times uh, was the suspect shot? Uh, I don't have that information, um, but certainly that'll be something that the investigators uh, look into and we'll have information about later. Thank you.